So, first of all, it's a great honor to be concluding speaker. There was a lot of good speakers before me, and there's still an elephant who can achieve these heights. Our world change and innovating have really, do they really have age boundaries? Do they, are they really 18 plus? So, life is short, like really short. All the elder people say that, but we fail to listen. In all that limited time, we manage to live. A simple question emerges. What do we live for? In fact, if we look in scale, there is a one correct answer to the question of our existence. We live to bring the change. We live to skew the progress and bend the limits and boundaries of possible. And that's quite difficult, right? For sure, any conscious person sees the point in making his or her actions have a global effect. In music and science, again, so many people. But would you believe me if I said that there is a way to step towards the global innovation in our adolescence? And yes, I have an option. Science projects. But before I tell you why, how, what, and other stuff, I would just like to ask you, how many of you know this guy? Like, really a few. So this is Jack Andraka, and he is an American inventor who is now 22 years old. And he has a very interesting story. When Jack was a teenager, or even a kid, he developed an absolutely accurate pancreas cancer testing that costs three cents, three cents out of the dollar. It's the way cheaper than an analogy that being on the market at that time. And I know what you think, crazy. Crazy person, crazy wonder kid that knows much more than adults or professors or PhDs do, and I would disagree. World change and innovations are not for crazy people. As Jack himself says, he had no supernatural knowledge in neither chemistry nor biology, but he had one thing. He had an existential interest in making the world be better. And so do I, and so did each and every person who dared to change the world. There are quite a lot of things being said about science projects. First is stress, depression, anxiety, sleep deprivation, and insane hard work. So well, what can I say? Fortunately, again fortunately, all of these are true. And let me explain this to you. But before I go, I would just like to add new networking, teamwork, and scientific and personal fulfillment in that list. I mean honestly, the free cheese, as we all know, the free cheese is only in a mouse trap. And especially these days, we should work really, really hard to attain memorable heights and innovate. And furthermore, stress, anxiety, and all that stuff, they happen only sometimes. Whereas, like, insane hard work, is, it's, it's pretty often. So, what I do, and why am I talking about this? As I said, there are quite a lot of difficulties that we will surpass. Imagine a baby that's learning to walk. Indeed, what I like about babies is their purposefulness and perseverance. Indeed, they cover a really small distance in a given time, but they move. They move towards maybe a, cap, a candy, an apple, or a juice box, but they never stop. They are not afraid of falling. They don't see a salary problems, they don't see school problems. They only see an apple in the end of the room. And what they do is endeavor, they endeavor to get at this apple. And we are dead babies in a science world. And if only we can resist the challenges we face. If only we can step beyond of possible. We can get to the point where we are walking all this time. You don't learn walking if you don't start crawling. You don't, and you don't even start crawling if you don't have a genuine purpose to evolve. The cancer testing guy passed through that. I personally passed through that. And hopefully, you will also. I also started a science project from scratch for a simple, simple idea. I was searching for a professor and mentor to work with. And now, we have a great team of people that are really into what we are doing. So again, why am I the person who is talking to you about it? Before I tell you what my project is about, I would just like to say that this is the thing that is quite simply is capable of changing of transforming the contemporary agriculture in the whole world. So let's get to it. And first, let's define the problem. Imagine 
all the deserted areas and infertile soil. Those take 11% of all land worldwide and 44% of Kazakhstan's. The largest desert, Sahara, itself expands its territory for one of Belgium each year. Huge numbers of square kilometers, hundreds of billions of dollars that are simply lost because those areas are not used for agriculture. And this is the problem that we are dealing with. Now, I hope you all know Orbeez. That's synthetical balls that can absorb water and swell. We call them hydrogels. And now I need your close attention. Imagine biodegradable Orbeez with introduced fertilizers on a synthesis stage that can absorb water, liquid, and give it out along with fertilizers. And hence, make any soil capable of providing a place for plants to grow. And this is our project. Our team, along with some college students and our lovely professor, are developing a solution for in-sand cultivation of plants. So let's get to it. Uh, we have two projects. First is agrogel, we call them agrogels, uh, without fertilizers, and agrogel with fertilizers. So first project took 2.5 years of work, and we have a really tremendous and good attention, uh, achievements that I really would like to share with you. It stays up in soil for five years and used for mineral but dry soil. Now look, we attain a partnership with Park of Nuclear Technologies in, in city Kurchatov. They sponsor, they sponsor all our financial costs, all the facilities, which are really huge numbers of money. Then we gain a partnership with Actobe Region and they are ready to adopt and implement our agrogels in their agriculture. And lastly, we pass through business acceleration program at Nazarbayev University. I mean, that's huge. And the next thing is the project that we were walking, working on for one year. This is our absolutely eco-friendly current research, and I like to call it as a startup because it's a really interesting thing. We have a cyclic manufacturing process that makes it really like economically effective, but I won't go in depth. And also introduce fertilizers that make cultivation of plants in desserts possible. And lastly, we have a vision and clear purpose for making the world different. Before I quit the stage, I would just like to mention just one thing, just one ability, just one crucial skill that is capable of transforming your lives for better. At least this, this is what I found out and what hundreds of business people genuinely believe in, the art of resilience. Let's put it this way, imagine, you have a really important stuff and you want to sell it, theoretically. And you are standing in front of the door of a person that has a power or ability to change your life in a moment. So you knock the door, nothing happens. You knock twice, still nothing. You knock three times and the door opens. But the person who opened the door says that he is not interested in you in any way. He's not interested in you and neither in what you offer. You go back home, you're really sad. The next day, you have a choice. You either go home and have a rest because you had a really long school day and you're not in that feeling, or you have a chance to go there, back. You decide that this day will be different. You man up, you brace yourself, and you go there. You knock the door, the door opens, but again, rejection. Again, you receive no. You go back home, but this time you are desperate. You want to cry to the pillow and have a real good rest. The third day, you are not that passionate. You decide not to go at all. But let's imagine, just imagine, if that person heard about you the day you left before, and now he was interested in what you offer and what you talk about. He even prepared himself to have a tea with you but you did not appear. You lost your chance, and now you'll never get it. Simply put, the ability to go there for the third time is called resilience, which is very, very important. So Jack and Draka had also a cool story about that. When he had an idea in his head about those cancer testing stuff and all these things, he decided to text 200 John Hopkins University professors and 199 of them rejected him. I personally also have a similar story. When we were starting all this research thing, 
One day it struck me. This thing is really cool. I mean, we can do this thing, we can implement it and make it worldwide. So I approached our professor and said, look, this is the thing that is really amazing. We can change the world if we, if we put a little effort to that. But he said, no. I said, I'll do my research part, I swear, but please let me, let me do it. And he said, no. He said, no, a week after, a month after. But eventually, I mean like seven or 10 times, because I really lost the count, I got a yes. And we started working, again, we attained a lot of partnerships, a lot of programs. And what I really would like to emphasize in my speech, that there are no age restrictions, no age limits or boundaries or thresholds whatsoever for innovation and world change. Thank you.